The Predator homeworld, or Yautja Prime, has been a bit of a mystery since forever. I mean, fans do want to know where and what exactly is the planet from where these apex hunters come to Earth in the hot summer season to collect their skull and spine trophies. Considered the birthplace and center of the Yautja civilization, the planet itself is enormously large, arid, and dangerous. Supported by a binary star system, Yautja Prime is home to not just predators, but several other terrifying species. But more importantly, it is the planet's history that has shaped the predator society and culture, making them strong, cunning, and a technologically advanced race. In this video, we will explore everything about this highly guarded planet, from its geography and climate to its history and culture. This video has everything you need to know about Yautja Prime, the sacred home of our galaxy's most ferocious and skilled hunters. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Number 1. Yautja Prime, Predator Home Planet To be very honest, we know little to nothing about the Yautja homeworld and their way of life, housing, political structure, etc. However, the little that we do know is in itself quite a bit of information. Let's begin with the topography and geology of this planet located in the uncharted regions of the universe. So the Predator homeworld is known to humans as Yautja Prime because we do not really know what the Predators call it. Neither do we speak their language, nor do they speak ours. Similarly, the Xenomorph homeworld is called Xenomorph Prime, but that's a topic for another marvelous video. I guess the day we learn to speak the Yautja language or languages, many more things will be learned about these apex hunters. But of course, no habitable planet ever housed just one species of beings, right? Unless of course that planet is housed by xenomorphs who would bring down mountains to kill you. So who or what else lives on Yautja Prime? Firstly, there are several species and subspecies of Yauchas, like the translucent Yauchas, the scout species, etc., that live on the arid planet. As far as the non-sapient species are concerned, one can find the predator horses, the blood pigs, the hellhounds, the keepsass, the Wydrak, etc. Furthermore, the Yautja Prime has multiple asteroids in orbit which could be a sign of some major cataclysmic event in the past, such as the destruction of a moon. <laughs> Number 2. Theory of Yautja Prime, Surface, Its Surroundings, and Their Culture But what about the geographical features? In the film Alien vs Predator Requiem, we got a glimpse of the Yautja homeworld, and from that short scene, a few conclusions can be drawn. Firstly, there is definitely enough gravitational force on the planet to keep everything on the surface, and maybe it is higher than the gravity on Earth, which makes Yautjas jump, hop, and run more easily on Earth. The atmospheric composition is definitely different on Yautja Prime, with a very degree of oxygen and other gases, which is why Yautjas can survive temporarily in Earth its atmosphere. The planet also provides enough raw material and metal to the Yauchas to construct their weapons as well as homes and other structures. The planet has at least a couple of biomes. Now, biome, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is a large, naturally occurring community of flora and fauna occupying a major habitat. Basically, it is a biological community that's formed as a response to the physical environment and climate where such a community is formed. So the two major biomes of Yaucha Prime are completely opposite in nature. One is made up of a hot and dry desert where there are several rivers or aquifers aqueducts of lava, and the other is a humid and evergreen jungle. This explains the love that the Yauchas have for both heat and jungles. The lava is a sign that the entire planet is extremely volcanic in nature, and these regions are plagued with extremely high radioactivity. However, that doesn't quite affect the Yauchas. Another reason for the arid nature of the planet is the presence of two suns. The binary star system has one star much bigger than the other, and the combined solar radiation leads to a change in the topography of the region. For instance, the rocks of the planet are created at a faster pace than Earth's rocks because the constant heating and cooling, because of day and night, creates thermal fractures. Furthermore, the terrain itself is loaded with volcanic mountains and canyons, including huge stone structures. One Redditor could even spot Yaucha statues on the surface. This guy deserves an award or something. Apart from the statues, there are tall buildings, skyscrapers, aircrafts, and hangars. In fact, one can see the Predator ship, on which Wolf came to Earth, and since he's something of a big shot on his planet, he lives in a penthouse-like home, which has a grand collection of various trophies. Thank you. 
Number 3. Yatcha Prime According to Movies Now, the 2010 film Predators takes place on the Game Preserve planet, which is basically a moon or a planet where most of the action takes place in the film. The Super Predators, led by the Berserker Predator, collect games from across the galaxy and drop them on this planet. The objective is that the Super Predators would hunt these lethal targets, because why not? The Game Preserve planet itself is a jungle world with lush vegetation and a breathable atmosphere. But why am I suddenly talking about the Game Preserve planet in a video concerning Yaucha Prime? Well, the Game Preserve planet either orbits another planet or is close to other planets, and one of those planets looks pretty much like Yaucha Prime. So it is possible that the Super Predators chose to live their disgraced lives on a planet near their homeworld. Having said that, some people theorize that the Game Preserve planet is the Yaucha Prime itself, but that seems like a stretch. In the 2018 film The Predator, we get to see another planet that could possibly be Yaucha Prime. In the Shane Black movie, the Upgrade Predator was sent to kill the Fugitive Predator. In a hologram, we could see a red Mars-like planet where a Predator lying on an operating table of sorts is being injected with something, possibly human DNA. The injection triggers a rapid and volatile reaction that leads to several changes in the upgrade Predator. This was the movie's way of telling us that the Predators on Yaucha Prime are looking for ways to enhance their physiology and have found Earth as a suitable location to move because of the rising temperatures because of global warming. Number 4. How Yacha's home planet was invaded by sentient insectoids called Amengi. They say humans evolved from apes, or something that was similar to apes, right? Likewise, predators had to evolve from some other organism. And that's exactly what happened, but there's more to predator evolution than just the hand of nature and natural selection. So before the Yauchas became Yauchas, and before they started taking trophies and wearing xenomorph blood as makeup, they were an ancient race called the Hish Q-10. But as it happens with all space-faring monsters, their planet got invaded by an insectoid and parasitic race of advanced aliens called the Amengi. The Amengi had started looking for newer worlds to conquer and exploit after their planet's resources got exhausted. They became a nomadic race and traveled from one world to another like a swarm of locusts consuming everything in its way. Upon coming to Yaucha Prime, they found the Hish, who were far more animalistic and beastly than the predators that we come across today. Also, these guys hadn't developed their advanced and powerful technology or weapons, and even lacked intelligence. These drawbacks made it quite easy for the Amengi to conquer the Hish. Subjected to cruel forms of torture, the Amengi enslaved and ruled the Hish for several thousand years to come. But in addition to slave labor, the Hish were also used as subjects for cruel experiments. And if that was not enough, wait for this. The Amengi also consumed the Hish as food. However, the predator ancestors had one more purpose as far as the Amengi were concerned, and it was something that would mold the predator way of life. The Amengi were most pleased with the Hish because they used the Hish as their game for hunting. Eventually, Hish hunting became a love sport among the Amengi, there would be bets on matches and gambling became an obsession. The sport soon became an attraction for the upper class Amengi, who would either pit one Hish against another in a gladiatorial battle, or would simply hunt them for adventure. Initially, the Amengi sought out the larger and more powerful of the Hish, but to make the competition more dangerous and exciting, the Amengi started to change the genetic structure of the Hish to make them stronger and more formidable. So in a way, the invaders were turning the locals into living weapons and transforming the very body parts of the locals into deadly weapons and tools. As time passed, the Predator ancestors were reduced to nothing but lesser denizens in their own homeworld. But that was until a warrior rose from the bottom, a leader of the Hish who had changed the history of Yaucha Prime. The hero's name was Ka'il, an albino Hish who was not only feared by the slaves themselves, but also respected by the rulers because he was as intelligent as he was powerful. Ka'il forged an alliance with the other powerful Hish and started to lead an insurrection against the Amengi in secrecy. In all the previous millennia, no one dared to challenge the Amengi, so despite advanced technology, their leaders had grown arrogant and reckless, while their armies had grown lazy and weak. When the insurrection came to life, the slaves annihilated their masters in a gory and brutal bloodbath. After killing the most powerful of the slavers, Kyle took the dead guy's face and wore it as a trophy, and the others followed him. Those who were left were put into slavery or slain. So now, we know how exactly the Predator became a race of hunters, and what the reason is behind their undying obsession with collecting trophies. As more time passed, the combination of the natural evolutionary processes and the genetic experiments carried out by the Amengi transformed the Hish into Yauchas, and the highly advanced technology left behind the Amengi was then used by the Yauchas in their hunts. Kail came to be known as the first predator or the alpha predator. 
Number 5. Council of Ancients Although not much is known about the Council of Ancients, what we do know for certain is that the Council holds superiority over all other Predator clans with the exception of the Bad Blood Predators of course. The Council works in conjunction with the Predator King and other clans including the King himself look for guidance when faced with dilemmas or any other major problems. Furthermore, the Council of Ancient also creates laws that govern the Predator society as a whole, and laws such as the Code of Honor were also created by the Council of Ancients hundreds if not thousands of years ago. If a clan needs an exclusive hunting right, it must come to the ancients with a petition. As the custodians and guardians of the predator laws and customs, they also keep the traditions and rituals alive. When a predator commits a crime, it is usually the Council of Ancients that announces the sentence and ensures that a sentence is carried out. Furthermore, the ancients are also responsible for the safety of their brethren from external forces such as humans or xenomorphs. Although called ancients, one clan of ancients doesn't rule forever. In fact, after a point of time, the council starts looking for newer clans that could serve as successors. These clans are made to fight against one another, and even being selected as a contender for the position of the council is a great honor, so the predators accept such invitations of battle with great pride. On other occasions, the clans are not told about their nomination and are made to fight one another simply because one clan sees the other as a bunch of poachers. Number 6. Yaucha Prime According to Comics In 1999, Dark Horse Comics published a piece of work called Predator Homeworld. Although the comics were about naturalist Maya Bergstrom and ex-combat journalist George Maxwell becoming involved with an elder predator hunting down three bad blood predators, the comic series' fourth issue details how predators could have been the original denizens of Earth but could have left our blue planet aeons ago. But more importantly, the first issue of the comic gives us a glimpse of the Predator homeworld. The planet seems to be the usual rocky planet with meager vegetation growing here and there. It's got a couple of moons, one is a large green moon while the other is a smaller red one. Interestingly, the predators live in small communities much like the Native Americans from the movie Prey, and instead of high-rise buildings from Requiem, they prefer simple cave structures. Dr. Maya theorized that the predators originated from primitive mammals called therapsids. These are a class of extinct animals that had tusks with frontal incisors and lateral canines. These organisms evolved around 275 million years ago and became extinct 100 million years ago in the early Cretaceous period. These organisms had both reptilian and mammalian traits, and in fact, the last of the therapsids to go extinct were mammals, and likewise the predators were mammals with reptilian traits. The comic Aliens vs Predator Chained to Life and Death also provides a sneak peek into the social life on Yaucha Prime, especially in regard to a class of predators named Ancients. Through the panels of the short comic, one could see the stone structures on Yaucha Primes, structures which immediately remind us of Roman architecture. So that's about all the major references I could find on the Predator homeworld or Yacha Prime. Although I appreciate the fact that we know something about the planet, but somewhere along the line, I also feel that not everything has to be revealed. I mean, the original movie was such a success only because of how alien the alien was. It was this mystery about the Predators that made the jungle hunter Predator a legendary horror icon. What do you think? And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.